Chase, what do you think about the way that uh, your team and, and Luca in particular handled kind of the, the chippiness and you know some of the uh, antagonizing those sort of things that were happening? Uh, I thought they did. I thought we did a great job. I thought Luca did a great job. Um, he didn't get a T tonight, did he? He did not. <laughs> He's singing that song. Uh, I don't think he sang a whole lot though. Uh, different different versions now. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, we understand what what it's mid or late uh, March, and we understand what's at stake. So um, Minnesota's a very good team. Uh, they're 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 hot. Um, they're playing at a high level, and I, I thought coming off of a long road trip, um, first game is always the hardest. Um, but I thought we stood up to the test and uh, did some really good things um, to find a way to get a win especially late executing the fouls um, so they couldn't get a three. The last few weeks in particular, you know, a lot of your comments have been about preparing for the playoffs. In what way do you think tonight's game prepared you for the playoffs? Yeah, well, um, just being able to execute late. Um, we got looks, uh, you know, Dorian again in the corner, or Reggie in the corner, it seems like the ball finds him. It shows Luca trust uh, with his teammates. Um, Spencer is out there. Um, we even went with uh, Dorian at the five. We went small um, just to see how that looked. Um, a lot of the journey is about the playoffs, if you're lucky to get there. Um, and so um, this past week, we've been in a lot of situation late game um, that could, we can lean on. And the Boston situation that appeared here tonight, we took a challenge 50 50. Um, once it started to go a little bit longer than norm, um, we felt maybe it is Boston versus the jump ball. And uh, we talked about what we needed to do, and, and Luca executed the foul out of that jump ball. Because if he doesn't, the way things go, Bev makes the three, and then now uh, does it, we get the last shot, but do we go into overtime? How do you handle a player like Maxi, who's obviously going through a, a Significant and weeks launched uh, slump on offense. Yeah, continue. What I what I love about Maxi and what he's doing is he's shooting the ball still. You know, most would just turn it down, not even look. He's shooting it, and uh, they do look good. I, I swear they're going in, but I think at some point when they do, it's going to be uh, a lot of fun for him and the rest of his teammates that are on the floor because they keep throwing the ball. Uh, he's going to have he has to take them. He's taking them, and they're going to fall for him. And uh, when they do, it's just going to make the offense that much easier. What did you think of the no center lineup? And how, how viable was that going forward? Well, it was only 30 seconds, I think. So um, analytics will say it was off the charts. Um, <laughs> but it's just something that we can look at, um, especially if we're going to um, hit or we're, we're in some kind of throwing a pitch of what we are doing, uh, double team or if we're reading. You know, we can look at that lineup. We got one on Zoom. Josh, go ahead. Yeah, Jason, this team has been very good in clutch games recently. Um, what is it about these guys that seem they seem to get better when the team uh, when the game gets tighter? I don't think anyone panics. Uh, I think uh, offensively, uh, we know what we're trying to get to, and then defensively, it's about getting the rebound, and that's probably the one area we just have to clean up. We have some 50-50 balls there. But no one's, you know, everybody understands what they have to do. Their assi the assignments uh, are clear, uh, their role is clear, um, and they execute. And, that, and it's fun to see on both ends, defensively and offensively, uh, when we have to get a stop, we find a way to get a, a stop. And then on the offensive end, Luca, you know, finds the right person or he takes a wide open shot. Okay. You guys, uh, a lot of your offensive sets uh, came down the last, like, you were winding down just to get a shot off in the last 24 seconds. Mm -hmm. You know, what was going on on those possessions? And, of course, you know, you, it helps that you come in and get that huge offensive rebound when you get it, when you lose against the three. Um, just trying to re create redrives and, you know, play out of driving kicks. Um, I feel like they were switching. And then they start doubling Luca, and then they start running guys off the line, and we just started a little blunder. And it was a lot of open threes for me and Reggie. <laughs> you know, and Maxi too. Just you know, if he would have made some of them shots, you know, I feel like, you know, we probably would won a little, a little easier. But you know, I can't wait for Maxi to catch fire. How comfortable are you in those corners when uh, when the game's on the line? Um. You know, I feel it, it, I'm comfortable, but it feels good when you hear your team, you know, 
everybody on the bench saying, you know, don't worry about it, you're going to make a big one. You know, just because I just missed the previous two. And, you know, everybody's still cheering me on, like, you're going to get a good, you're going to get a big one. So, you know, it feels good just knowing I created that much, you know, trust in the team. When you made that big one, uh, you know, they called timeout and you uh, yeah. jumped around pretty good there. What, what, was, what was going on there? Uh, just because, uh, Beasley, Beasley got the dunk, and you no, know, uh, they was they was t talking over there on the sideline, and it just basketball. You know, I told them I was gonna make a big shot, and then I missed it right in front of their bench, and then I made the net. <laughs> so I got my chance to bark at them, and I'm gonna let them hear about it. So okay. yeah. they're a pretty talkative team these days, aren't they? Mm, yeah, everybody like to talk, you know, but I love it. I love it. Everybody on our team love it, you know, especially you know Luca love it too, you know, and I think. That kind of makes me like him even more because, you know, you talk to Luca, he's going to turn up. So. It didn't look like he enjoyed every conversation he had with Pat Bev. No, nah, it's, it's mutual respect between them. It's mutual respect. I think Luca earned, he earned his respect over the over the years, especially in, like, them playoff series. Do you feel like you did a pretty good job of making life tough, especially for a uh, town? Yeah, DP did a good job, um, you know, making it hard for him, getting deflections. And it was it was a good call. it was a good scheme good scheme we uh, I feel like we had executed it well you know we had to change up you know different schemes you know because you can't give you know a player like that the same look and we know he was coming off been playing real good he just had sixty it's <laughs> a lot of points why do you think you guys are winning all these close games um, staying together I, I would say we just staying together. You know, when they took the lead, you know, you didn't see no bad body language because we, we honestly had got three good three good looks before they took the lead. So, you know, I feel like everybody just knew, you know, we, we keep being open looks, we're going to make them. And, you know, I made one and Reggie made one. And we got to win. We're good. You're going to get Luca a pass for tonight? Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he, yeah, he, uh, no, he's, he still found guys, though, you know, just by having them on the court, you know, he caused problems, you know, but it was one of them nights, not one of them nights for him, but I feel like everybody else picked up the slack. Why, why do you think you guys were pretty successful against Paul, uh, I mean, especially the um, I mean, it was obviously a big part of our game plan. Um, I want to send two guys at him and all of his ISOs post-ups, uh, make it as difficult and try to get him off the ball. Uh, and then uh, Dorian, was, uh, you guys threw different looks at him. Uh, like, how many different looks would you say that you guys will throw at somebody in a, in a given game, especially Kyle? Uh, um, I think it was three. Three different set schemes. Uh, I guess so, but I mean, each situation kind of presents a different opportunity to disrupt what he wants to do. So there's variations within that, but um, we're trying to send two at him and trying to get him off the ball. Okay. Yeah. The, Obviously, a team right on your tail on the standings and uh, kind of an unluca like night for Luca. Uh, how, does it, how does it feel to have this team uh, be cohesive and, and come together like it did against, uh, against this team? Uh, I mean, first of all, even even though he didn't necessarily score the clip that he normally does, he still created massive problems for their defense. Um, he found open guys. He maybe didn't knock down all the shots, but um, he was disrupting their defense massively and created opportunities for everyone else, even if he wasn't necessarily the one shooting, scoring, or assisting. So um, although the points weren't there, he was a massive part of our success offensively especially. Um, but in terms of guys stepping up, that's, it's important that we continue to develop and um, find ways to, to put the ball in the basket even when um, certain guys aren't necessarily making shots. And uh, what the heck happened on that free throw? The, the Beverly free throw? No. The only, only miss of the night. Oh, uh, I talked myself out of it. It's all right, though. No, I, well, but why you bring it up? I mean, that, it's kind of uh, of a fr frantic scene down there at the end. They're trying to get a three, obviously, and you guys are trying to foul them without them being in the motion. Mm -hmm. how, how tough is that to kind of make sure you uh, treat that situation with the respect to the Spurs, I guess. Yeah, it's a tough situation. Um, 
it's going to be a lot of bang bang stuff at that time of the game and um, our guys did a great job of remaining present and, and playing in the moment and, and staying in those possessions because they can uh, they can get difficult to stay focused at that time there's a lot going on so to know when to foul when D's off and to be careful not to you know give them the opportunity for a potential four point play is huge and um, our guys did a great job of that down the stretch. you think Luke and in some ways enjoys going against Pat Bev? Luca enjoys going against everybody. Luca loves the competition. He loves he loves the game first and foremost. So um, he's not phased by any of those antics or any any of those things. So he he enjoys competing. And, and I mean Patrick Beverly obviously is is a is a massive competitor. So he for sure enjoys it. For a few years there, it's, you, know, you guys have seen the struggle in um, clutch situations, or at least you know compared to other elite teams. Why do you think you guys seem to uh, Turn that around. Um, <laughs> we're just focused on trying to improve every game. That's the biggest thing. Uh, our chemistry and accountability are um, something that we kind of refer back to uh, every opportunity we have, and, and those are kind of the pillars for us moving forward and, and continue to, to develop. And I think in those in those late moments, um, having held each other accountable for the whole first whatever forty minutes or whatever it may be. Um, we have that trust factor at the end to be able to pull things out. And, um, yeah, the chemistry is there as well. So offensively and defensively, there's that trust factor. So we can uh, find ways to, to pull games out in those tough situations. Appreciate it. As a guy who's, you know, basically been in the last month or so, what is your, what is your opinion about this team about the way that you guys handle, you know, chippiness and adversity and close games down the stretch? Um, I mean, since, since I've been here, you know, I've noticed that we have great resolve. We have a high level of maturity um, across the board, and uh, we've been able to win those those close games. Hey, you've talked about how important role definition is for this team. Yeah. Um, the lineup's down the stretch, though. There's a lot of flexibility there. Mm -hmm. How do you kind of, as, as a team and, and individually, handle those situations where you don't necessarily know what the, what the lineup's going to look like? Well, I mean, I think that's what makes the, the role definition so important, right? Because now, regardless of the lineup, like, you know what your job is. You know what I mean? So, uh, for example, myself, right? Like, I know if I'm on the floor with Luca, that means secondary ball handler. Um, if I'm on the floor with Luca and JB, it's probably more of a spot-up shooter, right? Um, if I'm on the floor with JB, then it's about you know, whoever's kind of got it rolling at the time. So that's pretty simple, right? The the other pieces to the lineups don't really matter as much in terms of, like, the role aspect for myself. And I know everybody kind of has their checklist, probably their one, two, three that they go through and they know who they're playing with at the time. Like, DP is going to roll more, right? Max is going to pop more. So if I'm coming off a pick and roll, like, I know these characteristics of them, and then that means our spacing is going to be different based on that stuff, you know? But that's also part of, like I said, everybody knowing what it is that they do and just doing what they do. So... Um, regardless of lineup, because we know who we are, it allows us to play with everybody around us. And then even if you're spot up shooting, I would imagine you're going to start looking for your shot based off mismatch or shot clock or... Oh, for sure, for sure. Like those, those, those nuanced situations, right, right. definitely, right? Like, you know, if I, if I catch uh, the big on a closeout, right? Like, yeah, I'm probably spot up shooting more right now, but if I catch the big on a closeout, I'll drive it. Like, you know, you're still playing basketball out there. So, you know, it... When we talk about role definition, it's a, it's a loose box. It's not like, you know, sharpied in where, like, you cannot do anything. Else. No, like, it's, it's a loose box just so everybody kind of has an idea of what's going to happen. And then we know, for example, like, you know, Boban closed out on me. I'm probably going to drop it. Sorry, Bobby. You can't guard me. <laughs> Tossing strays at Boban. Most <laughs> likable man in the NBA right there. No, I know. So I had to do it. Um, was that your first NBA uh, rain delay? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I, I can't remember another one. Uh, I, I've noticed that uh, Dallas doesn't handle weather very well. <laughs> I, I would say I definitely have noticed that. We had like a grand total of like one inch of snow and Uber drivers are calling me like, I don't feel safe driving in this. I'm like, mm. guys, it's basically rain. <laughs> What's a, does it say, I mean, you're playing a team that's on your tail in standings, obviously, mm -hmm. and, and you got out a win like this in spite of a, a not, an unlook-alike performance, let's just say. Yeah. 
Well, uh, how does it feel? Yeah, well, how does it, what does it say about the, the, the growth of this team? Oh, I mean, I think it speaks to the maturity. I think it speaks to the resolve. Um, obviously, you know, we, we trust Luca 1,000%. Um, we know to be our best selves, like he has to be at a high level, but it also is, is good every now and then if he does have an off night, right, to, to have enough resolve as a unit to, to get a win against a quality opponent, right? Like not, you know, a, a team that we may play obviously in the playoffs or, you know, something that, you know, could happen when we're fighting for seeding, like you said. And, and the situations down there like at the end when you know they're trying to get a three-point off your guys are trying to foul. How do you? How tough is that situation when you you, you obviously don't want to foul? When yeah. They start yeah. No. I mean, it's one of those things that you definitely don't want to foul when he when he goes into his shot. Um, you're trying to listen to you know obviously Coach Kid and stick to the game plan and, and do the right thing. I mean, when it comes down to stretch, it's about attention to detail. You know, and um, you know, obviously we were, we were able to execute it fairly well this time.